been players from Syracuse University's football program have ever worn the number 44. Of those 11, three earned All-American honors. The three, Jim Brown, Floyd Little, and Ernie Davis. With Friday's release of Universal's new movie, The Express, we take a closer look at the life and achievements of Ernie Davis from some of those who knew him best. Warren Williamson has the story. In the history of college football, there's one name that stands alone. One name that signified power, speed, and balance. Sports historians say Jim Brown is the best running back that ever played the game, college or professional. But if you ask Jim Brown, he'll say it was fellow Syracuse Orangeman, Bernie Davis. How, do you, how did you see him as a running back? What kind of running back was was he to you? Well, he was like my clone. <laughs> we all know that. We were certainly. like twins, uh, and uh, he had everything. You know, he had the balance, the speed, the quickness, the agility, power. The year was 1958. Ernie Davis arrived at Syracuse, recruited by his hero Jim Brown. And like Brown, Davis had an extraordinary college career. 2,300 rushing yards, a national championship in his sophomore season, a feat that's not been done since, and becoming the first African American to win the Heisman Trophy. But history tells us it wasn't Davis's athletic prowess that made him special. It was his eloquent search for racial equality in a turbulent time. Ernie Davis was just a remarkable person. He had remarkable human qualities of kindness, patience, uh, integrity. It's surprising to me that this story isn't more widely known. He's part of a lineage that includes Jim Brown and Floyd Little and Larry Zonka and others. An impressive lineage indeed, which makes us wonder how good Davis might have been if he had realized his dream of playing professional football. You see, Davis died from leukemia shortly after he was drafted number one, and sadly before ever playing an NFL down. Ernie Davis was only 23 years old at the time of his death. I think the fact that he didn't get that opportunity, it's, 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 it's painful for me that I knew what his passion was, and he never got a chance to fulfill his dream or his goal. When he said goodbye, uh, kind of told me that he was going to the hospital. He didn't go see Art, and then he was going to go in the hospital. He didn't say he was going to die, but basically say goodbye. I think his, 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 his passion, his, his commitment to, to uh, Syracuse University, his, his gratitude for the opportunity that he had from Elmira to Syracuse, to, for the opportunity to get drafted, for the opportunity to play with Jim Brown, his hero, my hero. Because he affected people without uh, really doing much than being himself and being a good human being. Just two months before Ernie Davis passed away, he was asked to write a story for the Saturday Evening Post to talk about his illness. In that article Davis wrote, some people say I'm unlucky. I don't believe that and I don't want to sound as if I'm particularly brave or unusual. Sometimes I still get down, and sometimes I feel sorry for myself. Nobody is just one thing all the time. But when I look back, I can't call myself unlucky. My 23rd birthday was December 14th. In these years, I've had more than most people get in a lifetime. That was Ernie Davis. Shortly after Ernie Davis died in May of 1963, Cleveland retired his number 45, even though Davis never played a single down for the Browns. Up next on